go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's about to be a lit day today. Hey, let's get back to our swagger, come on. All of them get the dough down. That is the juggernaut. All right, we are back with another segment of The Audible presented by Verizon. My name is Gabe Henderson alongside Ben Lieber. Our two player guests of tonight, Justin Jefferson and my guy KJ Osborne. And like I was telling you guys off camera, we're going to start this segment off with a little bit of trivia slash know your teammates. So, Justin, I got a question for you, man. You ready for this? I think so. <laughs> All right. So what college did KJ go to? before going to the University of Miami. Buffalo. Buffalo. That was easy. Yeah, that was easy. <laughs> it was easy because we were talking. <laughs> I already knew that, though. I already knew that. You did? Did yeah, you I already knew that. Before? Yeah, I already knew that. I swear. Right, right, let's see, let's we see. always talk about it. We always talk about it. here talking about how he's getting some crap from teammates. Yep. Buffalo <laughs> this, talking about Miami. And then, and then I look down, I'm like, Oh, yeah, that's the first trivia question. <laughs> we probably shouldn't have went with that conversation but beforehand. One thing, one thing we didn't get to. Oh, we got, we got, we got another question for you since that was so easy. Tried what number answer. did he wear oh. at the University of Buffalo? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that one. Uh, I'm going to guess, though. Uh, man, if you get this right. This is, is kind of hard. This is kind of hard. I want to say five. For some reason. Yeah, you envision like an 80s number or like a single digit? Single digit. Okay. Is it three? Eight. Eight? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't have, have guessed that. Eight. Plus three. <laughs> <laughs> I was to say, I was kind of guess that. I want to guess that. I really wanted number two. And okay. when I came in, we had a senior that was number two. So I got number eight. And then I just stuck with it. Like, it was no really reason for it. That's why when I went to Miami, I got two, though. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So what, so what was the impetus of going from the Buffalo Bulls to the Miami Hurricanes? Like, what was that thought process about? Um, you know, I just wanted to play in a big-time program. You know, uh, Miami, you know, the brand and the ACC, um, prime time. My quarterback, I went to the draft at that time um, from Buffalo, and I thought it was a good opportunity for me. So uh, I took the chance, and I think it paid off. It was a, it was a good decision. Who else were you looking at? Was it, was it always just Miami? It was when I came out, it was a lot of different schools. I, I, just like you, I was a two-star recruit, so I wasn't really used to that coming out. So I had all these schools talking to me, but I narrowed it down to Miami, uh, Florida State, and North Carolina. And um, it really ended up came down to Miami, Florida State, and uh, I was happy at Miami. So outside of like, you know, the talent, like what was the big difference between the MAC and the ACC? Besides the talent, um, well, not not much, obviously. Okay. Um, it's just it's really just just the talent. Like it's just like the starters will be good, and it's just like it's just not a lot of fall off gotcha. um, from from the starters to like the twos or the threes. Um, other than that, though, um, the Mac like the guys play extremely hard, like big chips on their shoulders. So if anything, like the Mac guys, they it's like it's a little tougher because they they're working. Like people got a chip on their shoulder, or sometimes you know those big time guys like it's not the same. All right, this is a question for both of you guys because you both play big time football, but you talk about Mac, about the Mac, you know, getting, they get, you know, one of those big games a year. They get their, their Miami is their mm -hmm. college football championship. So, like, preparing for those games, like, do, do you go in with a chip on your shoulder? Like, okay, these guys are coming in to, to beat it. I mean, every team's coming in to beat yeah, us, but they got a little extra juice. Right. Um, I mean, that's, that's what you really have to focus in on. Uh, don't matter the team, you still have to come prepared and ready to play. Uh, but I always feel like, you know, if there's the like the little teams, those are the stat games. <laughs> those are the stat games. <laughs> That's we're mostly getting out of halftime anyway, so I might as well do what I got to do and like get out. Uh, for the to beat us. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 That is true. That happened to us one time. We lost to Troy one time uh, my freshman year, our homecoming game. Not thinking, <laughs> we, you know, wasn't yeah, thinking about it. Thinking about your stats. That's yeah, for sure. Homecoming queen, homecoming queen. <laughs> what are we after doing after the, after the game? <laughs> Wind up losing. <laughs> Crazy. See, for me, it's different because I had the best of both. So, you know, I was, I was in the position where I'm playing the big time team and, you know, we like, you know, we want to prove that, you know, we can play on that level and, you know, we just as good as those guys. And then when I went to Miami and a smaller school come in, personally, I'm like, you know, they, they practicing hard this week. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm like, you know, I'm just going to try to practice the same, like, same thing. I try to treat every team the same, but I was trying to relay the message to the guys, like, you know, that team coming in, like, they, they ready to work, they're gonna have a chip right. on their shoulder, and they're gonna try to prove that, you know, they can play here too. So I kind of had a, a unique situation. All right, so here's the thing that always baffles me. So 
I'm a northern climate guy. You're a Michigan <laughs> guy, right? Yeah. Playing, so I played football at Kansas State. We're like right in the middle of the country. Mm. It's, it's hot, it's a little humid. Yeah. I still cramped up a lot. Yeah. How the hell do you guys play football in August in training camp in Louisiana in Miami, Florida? How do you make it through? I don't know, oh. honestly. <laughs> um, and don't tell me it didn't affect you. <laughs> oh, it definitely affected oh me. Good. Gosh. 100% affecting me, uh, especially in college. You know, we doing all the extra conditioning, extra running, uh, practices two hours long. So it definitely was tough, but uh, I mean, you just got to push through it. Just got to suck it up. And, and Did you ever going. have one of those, oh, please, God, let me get through this practice or let oh me get through God. this conditioning? All, all the time. <laughs> all the time. So Maybe every day. <laughs> 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 so my thing is when I play, like, I always, I played in the South, so I played school in Virginia, and I, I'm from North Carolina. So when I played, I always played with long sleeves on. Oh, so I know oh. KJ got on long sleeves right now, oh, so. but long sleeves, <laughs> it kept me cool. Like, it keep the sun rays off your body. Maybe I'm in the minority on this, but play, I'm cool with that. I ain't play with nothing in on Louisiana, nah. <laughs> so. I Louisiana, play, I play with just shoulder pads. Like, it was shoulder pads and then skin, and I, I keep it up here, so my... No I shirt? Tried, no half I shirt? I didn't play with nothing on. <laughs> like, you can't Crop in Miami. Like, they, it's like, down there on Green Tree, you know, that's where all the legends mm -hmm. practice, like... Cause Diaz, they don't got no sympathy for you down there. Like, it get hot. Like, I be, and when I, you know, I came from Buffalo to Miami, so that was a huge difference for me. So like, it's hot. I'm like, you know, I can't go on the indoor. Like, I'm going to the trainers. Like, you know, what's the what's the heat index? They like 115, 118. I'm like, man, I'm about to call my mama. I got me out here in this heat. I'm, I'm dying out here, man. What? Start but, contemplating your decisions. But one decision you didn't contemplate was your degree. Of course. FBI. Mm -hmm. You don't hear many athletes with the FBI degree. Yeah, that's, uh, that's just something I'm, I'm interested in. Um, so obviously I'm getting my master's from Miami. I got one more class to finish with my criminal justice degree. That's something I want to pursue after football. And um, that's always just, just something I want to do. Um, you know, after football, obviously you got to have a plan. So that's what I want to do. What made, you, what made you pick that though? You know, people ask me that and I can't really say that. Like, I don't know. I think it's like, I, don't, I never watched TV, but if I did, I watched like First 48 and like like those the type of shows, show. like the criminal, yeah. like I like like White criminal House, like mind. White House Down, like I want like yeah, maybe I like, like Secret that. Service. Yeah. I like that type of stuff. So, um, but a bird flew my house the other day and I was scared. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I was terrified. <laughs> I was terrified. So I don't know. So you're more of an investigator than you are like law enforcement. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was terrified. <laughs> but, so. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, you know who Peanut Tillman is? Yes, yes. You know, he's an FBI agent. Yeah, I actually reached out to him like, like a couple years ago just on Twitter. Like, I probably, he probably wasn't going to reply. I know he gets a thousand messages probably, but I did. I reached out to him. Like, I think it was right after he retired. Yeah. I heard his story and, and uh, things like that. So I reached out to him. Though. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's we'll pretty. We'll make that happen. Yeah. We'll, we'll get you in. Because you played with Peanut, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got to make cool. that happen. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Appreciate that. But like, speaking, <laughs> speaking of that, like, how do you, I mean, <laughs> this first 48, that's like, that show is funny to me <laughs> because usually you get the person in the room and then right. they start saying yeah. everything. But right. to, to, to lock in on the football field and then off the field, you go into a, a, a world where it's all about trying to figure things out. Like, mm -hmm. does that apply at all? Uh, I think it does. Just like the concentration, just like the focus. It's just like one thing I try to live by, just be where my feet are. So when I'm at practice and I'm in the facility, you know, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm locked in on. And when I go to, and you know, it was different because that's grad school. Like, you know, if you're an undergrad, you know, it's cool. Like, but you know, you can kind of pace it through, but you know, grad school, like you're on your own, you know, you might have a class or two a week and the classes are really long and it's on you to, to do that stuff. And you got to know it. Like, it's not like, you know, that stuff you're not going to use. Like you want to go, you know, and use that in your future. So um, I just try to be with my feet are when I step in class, you know, I, I lock into to what I got to do. Just this responsibility, really. You know, I think that's an interesting skill at such a young age. I mean, we talk about it all the time and like, it doesn't matter if you're going to some corporate America deal or whatever, like, hey man, to be successful, you gotta be present. Like, be yeah. present about, about where you are. Right. You guys are some, some young guys in the league. Um, how do you practice, both of them, you kind of just talked about, it. maybe this question is for you, Justin, like how do you, how do you practice with all the distractions that you guys have now? With social media, you know, just your regular media responsibilities, family, friends, social life. Do you have any sort of things that you practice every day to keep yourself present? Like any mantras, anything that you like, inspirational um, words that you kind of lean on to make sure that you're just like, hey, I'm, I'm here at practice today, mm -hmm. and while I'm in this building, this is all that matters. Right. Um, 
I just feel like I'm a just happy person, honestly. Um, I mean, I'm, I love football. I just love being around football, and I feel like football is just an escape for me. Um, you know, coming in here with Adam and the rest of these guys, they make me laugh every single day, uh, make me laugh, you know, and just make me love just being here. So when I come here, I don't think about all of the other stuff. I just thinking about being being with them, uh, laughing with them, being around with them. And then when I get on that field, it's just me just enjoying my time, just me just having fun, just enjoying what I love to do. Uh, I can't really complain. I, I, uh, my life is good right now, so. Yeah. I can't. I can't complain about it. Good man. Don't don't treat it like like it's work. Yeah. Right. right. But right. you talk about those meeting rooms and <coughs> just laughing and joking. So like, who who is the oh the wide receiver room <laughs> speaker box? It's we got it. It's, it's so many. Like, uh, all right. This is how our room is set up. Um, so there's me and Adam at the top. Mm -hmm. um, all right. It's me, coach, coach, me, Adam, and him. And Dan, um, then below us is Weg is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so below us we have Dee Dee Westbrook. Uh -huh. He's the clown. He's oh my god, he's funny. He's country. Yeah. You know how he talks. Yep. Country people talk. <laughs> he's his own person. Um, and then we have oh my gosh, we have Wop. <laughs> Wop. <laughs> he from Tampa. Mm. He has Lord his own it. little lingo. <laughs> <laughs> he no, says his own off. language. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got a mirror all the way at the bottom in the front he's row. Like in the front, three, three, four rows away. I swear you don't think he's in the front row because he like this <laughs> talking to us and, and joking around the whole time. And his mind races a thousand miles per hour. So, I mean, just having all of those guys in the room at the same time. Hectic, you got, hectic, you but characters. I mean, I, I love being around them. It, it's fun actually having a laid back uh, meeting room, you know, Not to, to, mention that, to have fun with. I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. and he start from the top. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this, it, this lasts all day in there. Day. I was surprised to hear on your guys' little Vikings cam deal. I don't know when it was. You guys, were, people are talking about who's the biggest. I think Chris Boyd was talking about one of the biggest clowns on the team. Right. Yeah. And one of you guys mentioned Adam Thielen. Adam, like, hey, man, don't, on the sly, people don't Adam know Thielen. That. People, people don't, don't know, know that Adam he's... is a goofball. Wow. He's, he's, just like his, he's just like his son. He's just the older version of him. Like, Adam is running around. He's yeah. hyper. Like, yeah. he's off his coffee. He's yeah. talking, chatting. People like, wouldn't know. We had walk through. Like, Adam's talking. Adam, Adam, come on, Adam. Come on, Adam. Like, he just, he's saying the formation. <laughs> he's, just, he's talking back there. <laughs> He did, Adam, he did, Adam, he over here. Like we gotta get him involved. It's, it's just like it's just like taking care of a little kid. It's, all day. it's, it's so it's so funny. It's so yeah. funny. That's awesome. Well, after we come back from the break, we're gonna talk a little bit of football and then get you guys out of here. We'll be right back with more from Justin Jefferson and KJ Osborne on the Audible, presented by Verizon. Let's go! Bring it up! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! It's about to be a lit day today. Hey, let's get back to our swagger. Come on. All of them get the dough down. That is the juggernaut. All right, we are back. This is The Audible, presented by Verizon. My name is Gabe Henderson, alongside Ben Lieber and the two wide receiver studs, Justin Jefferson, KJ Osborne. And Ben, I, I, I like to start this segment off by just framing this Ben's breakdown. So take sure. it away. Yeah, uh, I like the alliteration of that. You like that? <laughs> yeah, I like the you B know. and the B, that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so KJ, let's talk about this. That's tough. That's, that's tight, that's isn't it? Picture. That is tight. Is that a slam dunk or what? <laughs> You're getting dunked on. Slap me dunked on. <laughs> You're getting dunked on. Windmill. <laughs> on his head. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, now you're so, not getting dunked on. <laughs> so for, for our radio yeah. audience that can't see this. Okay. Yeah, Surprise. that's fine. That's fine. They can use your imagination. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, use, the mind. <laughs> yeah, the radio, use your, use your imagination. Okay, so last week, Arizona Cardinals bombed down the field. And there you are, wide open. First touchdown in your career. What was that like? On first down, play action to Dalvin off that sweet run. Deep shot, man uncovered, KJ, 2010, touchdown! Two plays, one lead, and KJ Osborne's first National Football League touchdown. It's 6-0 Minnesota. 
Well, uh, we have been running that place since training camp. And uh, every time I run it, I just try to get really tight off JJ's heel. So if we come and they do have to pick it off, like I'm running too fast, you know, try to trip somebody up or, or do something. I was just kind of something I was doing on my own. I really actually scored on that like way back in training camp, like the same way. And I tried to do the same thing in the game and I executed it. Um, at number seven, he, he carried me and then he dropped me and I seen Kurt, he threw it. And after that, it was over. And you know, I caught it, everything after that was a blur. Um, and it was just a, a dream come true, obviously. I talked to somebody, I mean, I've scored that touchdown in my head a thousand times since I was a little kid. Um, so it was a dream come true. Um, I was telling JJ, I didn't know if I wanted to dance. Or just <laughs> I didn't know what I wanted to do, but uh, it was a fan talking to me in pregame. So I, I went right up to him and I was talking back at him. Yeah. I was looking at him in his face. So that was, that was pretty cool, a great moment. Um, it was cool. So you visualize the execution of the play, but you don't visualize the celebration. Right. I, I don't know. Yeah. Never happened. Happened. Like, Just would never make that. Yeah, he would never make that. The mistake. funny part is after the touchdown, he was like, "Bro, I don't know what to do when I score." I was like, "Bro, just do whatever you, you yeah. know, whatever symbolizes you." I mean, you know, I got the gritty. You can take the gritty. You know, <laughs> you know, everybody like, do the gritty, but hmm. it's up to you. That's you know, you have your own little thing. So were you the primary on that play? You were the number one read. It just depends on yeah. the defense. It, it depends just, on the defense. It, it, it yeah. depends but on the But a good chance that that ball, if if once you saw him drop you, you knew that that. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. When I when majority I came, of his man to man, it was probably most likely go go to him. Right. Yeah. Because uh, of because of the switch. That's why yeah. I came off. I came off running, and then when he dropped me, and I looked back, and I, I made eye to eye contact with Kurt. I'm like, it was coming. Let's let's go time. Let's go. So when you guys get a when you guys get a call like that in the huddle, and you know there's a high probability that this big play mm -hmm. coming, you say anything to yourself as you're running to the line getting set up. Or is it just more like being in the moment again? Me, like, I like I like to put in my head like, all right, just take the breath, mm -hmm. just calm down, <laughs> just focus, and not mess up. Cause you know when when you when you have a big play and you know it's coming to you, you know you like to fall start, uh, you like to like jump the snap a little bit. Uh, I so I yeah, <laughs> I did that the first game. <laughs> yeah. So I like to just you know just stay comfortable and just. Go get it. I know it's coming to me, so I got to go get it. But when it's not coming to you and you know it's man to man and it's going to him, I got like to set it up. You know, right. I got to make it look like it's I'm about to get the ball right. or I got to pick it for him or I got to set him up. So uh, either way, uh, just knowing the coverages and just knowing that, uh, you know, what, what jobs that we have to do. So, KJ, when you're in that moment and you catch the ball, I mean, you're wide. I was about to use another word, but you're wide open. <laughs> And you catch it, and you see a defender. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Go. <laughs> Go. Yeah. Really, yeah, really. Light. I thought I was more open than what I was, yeah. and so I was running. I, I was sprinting, but I wasn't like actually at top speed. I was just. It was like a, obviously not trot, but it was like, all right, yeah, I'm about to, you know, I'm about to walk in. Now seeing him coming, I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> like he was, because like, most like sometimes defenders like they'll just chill, like, oh, he's about to score, but he was coming. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I just gotta beat him to the pylon. So that's why I look back at the ref, like. Please be in, please be in. Then he, he gave me a touchdown. So. What if you got a tackle on the one? No, because <laughs> <'cause laughs> that happened. No, then they was, they was reviewing it. And I'm like, oh, please. <laughs> please don't. Please don't call it back. Now I can visualize your guys' setup in the wide receiver room and how, how, yeah. the, how the different levels of clowning was going to take place. Oh, would have gotten caught up the oh, one every, Oh, it everybody been bad. Tried, everybody it tried. Been bad. Have you ever been, been walked down, either of you? Oh, no, I've never been walked never. Ever. They're not going to admit that. Exactly. Come on. They I, never, that. I never got walked down. They know At that we're not going to go back and watch remember. film and see. I've <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. yeah. never, exactly. never been walked down. Never been walked down. So I know that's a special moment. Got to, that, that feeling's got to be euphoric. But two weeks in a row, you've come down the stretch and made some really mm -hmm. tough catches yes. and clutch moments. I know that those aren't the times to like celebrate and do the gritty or something like that. But like, that's got to be a great feeling too, you know, when it's like it's third, third and got to have it, fourth and got to have it, right. and you're the guy that's making the play. Right. No, it, it is a great feeling. I think in the moment, like, I'm not thinking about it because I'm just so locked in on just, just execution. Um, and that's all it's like, like the fourth down catch, you know, I, I kind of knew Kurt was coming to me. I mean, I got one on one, um, you know, it's the, it's, the, it's the big leagues, you know, it's the NFL, like one on one coverage, that's what you want, fourth down, like that's what you do all your off season training for, you know, it come down to that moment, one on one. So, um, that's the plays that you want to make for the team. You know, obviously, I just try to lock in and, you know, try to be consistent. So I've been able to do it two weeks in a row now. But, um, you know, I'm not even thinking about celebrating. No, I'm just so focused on because the job's not finished. You know, we're mm -hmm. trying to get points on the board. You know, I got the first down or whatever, but we got to keep moving the ball down the field. 12 catches, 167 yards in two games, a touchdown. 
Um, I know we talked a little bit earlier this year and you were talking about finding your role during training camp. Mm -hmm. Having a guy like JJ, you know, that's, you know, show the way you guys came in during the same time, but that showed the way like, hey, you know, you can play it. And then using the energy that he brings that he gets from Adam, who's been here for a while, how has all that meshed together and you guys been able to complement each other? It's been lovely. I mean, I, I brought them together today. I, yeah, I came in between did. them. I said, thank y'all, man. I said, y'all y'all helped me out so much just with route running and, you know, just the art of playing receiver. Like, they don't know how much they helped me because um, I'm, I'm, I'm always watching. I'm always watching. I'm watching their releases, how they're running routes, how they're using their hands, how they're catching the ball. Um, and it helps me. Um, I was even telling Adam, like, some of those third down plays that we call, it's like, one, one, the one that he called on third and 10, I think it was, like when the play got called, like, I felt comfortable. I'm like, oh, Adam, go get this. <laughs> and it's nice to play with guys like that, where it's yeah. like, you can get that comfort. Like, I'm not making a play, he's gonna make it, or he's gonna make it. Like, I was so happy like that we all scored. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's a dangerous trio. I feel like it, it can come to, and um, so I, just, I love it. I just try to feed off them guys. I know as a player, sometimes it's, it's dangerous in the course of the season to, to like want to reflect back yet, because the yeah. job's not over yet. Season's still going on. But for you, you know, you made such big strides from the end of season through the off season, through OTAs, mini camp into preseason. All of a sudden it's like, man, Kate, KJ's like really coming on in preseason. Like, mm -hmm. was there a point in time in the off season where like, there was that, that light bulb moment where you did feel like that switch clicked and you're like, ah, uh, I, I, I can do this. I get this. This I, you know, I think it happened last year when I was on scout team. Um, a lot of guys, you know, not a lot of guys, some people, like when they go to scout team, they're not playing, they're just out there just practicing. Like I was out there with the ones and I was trying like my best. Again, I was watching other guys and I was trying to work my craft. I'm like, I knew, you know, my, the time's gonna come, you know, if I continue to work, like I have my whole career, like the time where I can get on the field is gonna come. So, you know, when I, if I was like beating the ones, you know, uh, last year during scout team, that's where I'm like, you know, I can play in this league. And I remember, um, we were in Detroit, like the last game of the season. And I'm looking in the mirror before we leave the hotel. And I'm like, next year, I'm not gonna feel like this. Mm -hmm. Like next year, this last game of the season, I'm not gonna feel like this personally. And then from the day after that, um, I was working my butt off to, to get ready for a big year too. KJ, always a pleasure talking to you. Looking you. forward to seeing you do work this upcoming Sunday. For KJ Osborne, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Yes, sir.